There is such a plethora of different modes of being online with other people, modes of forming community, um, that it's very difficult to generalize about them. But we can get particular, and we can talk about some of the particular communities that have had uh, an especially dramatic effect. Many of those things, especially for people in the Anglophone internet, emerged from a small handful of very unusual, anarchic, anonymous communities, um, of which probably the most famous is 4chan. 4chan uh, was actually started near where we are physically right now, just a little ways away in New York City by a young man named uh, Chris Poole. He was inspired by the world of um, Japanese online communities, one of which, most notably, is structured around an idea of total anonymity. Because normally when we think of an online community, we think of either something like Facebook, where you theoretically are operating under your name, or um, something where you're doing a pseudonymous thing, but it's a persistent pseudonym. These Japanese sites were sites that were structured around the idea that every time you used the system, you were anonymous by default and you had no persistent nickname. Everyone would simply be in continuous dialogue as essentially Anon. And the, the sort of core notion that, that structured that was this idea that people could only be really honest with each other if they had no persistent identity. That was the moment when your true self, your true views, your true perspectives came out. The site that he started, 4chan, quickly diversified into many subsites where the idea was you could get together and like anonymously discuss all kinds of different things. Cars, you could share your artwork. But there was one of those subsites that became by far the most important and is now essentially synonymous with 4chan, and that site was called B. And B was random. B was for everything that wasn't A, anime. B was for everything else. And B expanded and expanded and quickly kind of consumed most of the, the traffic and energy and attention that surrounds 4chan. But, Poole is like a teenager, right? He's running these servers, he's running the system, he's paying for bandwidth, <laughs> very, very small amounts of money. So he couldn't afford to keep massive archives of the activities that were happening on B, especially because people were posting images. He couldn't keep all of those images. So as new posts are added to the site, old posts disappear. They simply vanish, they drop off the edge of the system. So you have these multiple kinds of anonymity. You're not posting as yourself, and you're posting in a context where anything you put up is expected to simply vanish. If it's an image of someone being disgusted by something, if it's an image of someone being amused, if it's an image of an animal doing something puzzling, the impulse is to start using it conversationally. Because you always have it on your desktop, you can just drop it back into the discussion in a new way. And here you can already see like the initial shape of what we now think of as meme culture. All of that stuff, lol cats things where people are adding new text, new materials, things where people are reusing particular images with new sort of additions to them to change their, change their meaning. As that starts to grow, as that starts to cohere, people who are not dedicated 4chaners begin to notice it and begin to say, like, oh, this is really funny, this is strange, I can't quite describe why this works, but this really works. And they start to spin it off and become like mediators, almost. People who will like come into 4chan, a friend of mine once, once described them as being like fishermen, you know, like you come into 4chan, you like harvest the new strangeness that has developed there. And then you cycle it out, in some cases through companies, but often it would just be users themselves who would see something and then they would bring it into to a context like Facebook or a context like Reddit where it's persistent, where it lasts. And once there, other people would be reposting it, commenting on it, sharing it, and from there it begins to kind of circulate outwards. So you end up with this extraordinary situation where you have something like a kind of volcanic forge of the most peculiar forms of Anglophone internet culture. And, and from there, it begins to spread out until it becomes simply one of those facts of life, simply part of the accepted nature of conversation online.